So, so APOE, um, it's a gene, and APOE4 is the, the strongest uh, risk factor for sporadic AD that we, that we know of. Um, so we're able to identify these individuals that carry this, this risk gene and understand what are the early changes that we can detect in the brain in the context of having this, this risk allele. Um, so it's a nice way of understanding these, these early changes. Um, so my work has focused on integrating this information, um, APOE4 status, and also some other genetic predictors of AD in conjunction with, with imaging early in the disease to, to understand, to help us understand risk um, in those individuals. So, like, so for APOE4, um, for instance, we know that that's associated with um, abnormal amyloid levels very early. Um, but interestingly, there's uh, these additional effects such that if you are, if you do have high amyloid um, and also carry this risk gene, you will, for instance, decline faster than if you don't have this, this risk gene. Um, so those are ways in which we can combine genetics and imaging to help us understand who's at risk and these, these early changes that occur in Alzheimer's. And there's this strong link between APOE um, and amyloid, which is one of the hallmark pathologies of Alzheimer's disease, but it also seems like APOE has uh, further reaching consequences that don't necessarily just go through amyloid. Um, so we can use imaging to, to tease this apart. For instance, we can look at effects of APOE in individuals that do not, um, that are amyloid negative, for instance, and determine whether or not there is additional damage done in these individuals. Um, we can stratify patients based on their APOE4 status and understand if there's different spatial distributions of, of tau, for instance. Um, so. I think the additional information both um, allows us to understand mechanisms of APOE that are not specific for Alzheimer's disease that might be relevant for many neurodegenerative diseases. Um, for instance, one mechanism is response to neural injury, uh, which I think literally the plenary speaker right now is like ta kind of talking about these, these sorts of mechanisms from a basic science perspective, um, uh, which would make somebody more vulnerable to Alzheimer's disease pathology if they do um, end up developing that as well.